In the 1950s and 1960s, Western countries were very fascinated with short takeoff and vertical landing, STOW VL aircraft, and they all wanted to make breakthroughs in related technical fields in order to gain a technological advantage in the future possible war. France was no exception. Dassault Aviation modified a Mirage III fighter jet into a vertical takeoff and landing VTOL, experimental aircraft to explore VTOL technology. This experimental aircraft was named the Dassault Balzac V, and only one was modified. The designers did not change its aerodynamic layout, but provided the required power for takeoff and landing by installing multiple lift engines inside the aircraft. The Balzac Phi began assembly in January 1962, conducted ground tests in July, and made its first flight in October. The designers replaced the fighter jet's original two engines with the non-afterburning Bristol Siddeley Orpheus Bore three engines with a single engine output of 21.57 kN. In addition, a total of eight Rolls-Royce RB162 lift engines were installed in two sets of two on each side of the intake duct near the aircraft's center of gravity, with each engine having an average maximum thrust of 9.83 kN. The landing gear was specially reinforced to withstand the gravity of vertical takeoff and landing. The intake for the lift engines was located on the aircraft's back. It needed to be opened when in use and closed to maintain a smooth exterior surface when in level flight mode. In addition to the experimental aircraft's lift system, the most important thing to be tested on the Balzac 5 was the control system of the VTOL aircraft. The power system of the Balzac 5 was very unique. When the aircraft was preparing for vertical takeoff, its two horizontal thrust engines needed to be opened to start the eight VTOL engines using the high-pressure air generated by the engines. The aircraft had to increase the level flight thrust after reaching an altitude of over 30 meters and close the VTOL engines and their intakes after reaching a speed of 300 kilometers per hour. Transitioning from level flight to vertical landing did not involve reversing the above steps. Instead, when the aircraft's speed decreased to 300-320 km per hour, the intakes on the back of the aircraft needed to be opened, allowing a large amount of air to spin-start the engines. During this process, the two main engines could not provide them with high-pressure air as they needed to maintain the flight of the aircraft. If a large amount of power were instantly diverted, it could quickly reduce the thrust and lead to a crash. After the eight engines started normally, the thrust of the main engines was gradually reduced and the position was adjusted for landing. Although this process may not seem difficult, in reality, there were many problems. For example, how to coordinate the thrust of so many engines, and the engines also took up too much space, resulting in a severe shortage of fuel, allowing only 30 minutes of flight. The first flight of the Balzac 5 was tethered, with the aircraft only conducting a few meters of vertical takeoff. In 1963, the aircraft successfully completed the transition from vertical takeoff to level flight and subsequently landed conventionally. On January 10, 1964, the aircraft took off for another test flight, this time to test the aircraft's aerodynamic control surfaces. However, the aircraft lost stability and crashed at a height of 100 meters, and the pilot died. The French clearly did not want to give up on this aircraft and spent about a year repairing it. After that, it flew 65 times until it lost control and crashed at a height of 50 meters in October of the same year, resulting in the death of the pilot due to insufficient ejection altitude. Although the French were reluctant, the experimental aircraft was severely damaged and no longer worth repairing. Although the Balzac 5 was just an experimental aircraft, it is rare for an aircraft to suffer two serious crashes, making its fate quite unfortunate. 